Thank you for joining us here on The Biggest Story tonight. I'm Niranjan. It's 7 p.m. And the countdown has begun to the Aditya L1 liftoff, India's first mission to the sun. We will be studying the sun. We have a date on it. 2nd of September, 11.50 is when that liftoff will happen from Sri Harikota. Here are the headlines on The Biggest Story tonight, this Monday evening. Congress pushes for Rahul Gandhi as a prime ministerial face once again, but the rest of the I dot N dot D dot I dot A partnering Rahul Gandhi, they're now silent. On the contrary, JDU is pitching for Nitish Kumar. Another leader from Akhilesh Yadav, Samajwadi Party, is talking a controversy after Ram Charit Manas insult. Now saying that Hinduism is a hoax. Political face-off over the Bengal explosion. Anurag Thakur hits out at Mamata Banerjee government. Two suicide cases in the last 24 hours in Rajasthan's quota minister blames bad company. India's golden boy Neeraj Chopra does it again, becomes the first Indian to back gold at the World Athletics Championship. After Chandrayaan 3's success, ISRO announcing Aditya L1 launch on the 2nd of September. Pragyam the rover successfully crossing its first big hurdle as it comes across a 4-meter diameter crater. And uh, the success of Chandrayaan-3 mission being discussed, celebrated, as more and more pictures emerge from India's successful third lunar mission. We have an announcement today of uh, the date of the liftoff of Aditya L1. Aditya L1 will lift off at 11.50 a.m., 11.50 hours on the 2nd of September, it's in a few days from now, from Sri Harikota. Let me go across straight on the biggest story tonight to Srijan Pal Singh. A lot of interest, Srijan, on uh, what India will set out to do, the mission objectives. Uh, Srijan Pal Singh is a senior uh, scientist. Srijan, uh, what will ISRO look to do with this mission? Well, uh, with the Aditya L1 mission, I think uh, we are now creating a new milestone because uh, with our successful completion of landing on the moon, and now you see, Brilliant work by Pragyan out there, uh, you know, so far away and so beautiful navigation because we were all fearing that something might go wrong with Pragyan Rover. That was the last issue which we might have had. So we have cleared that barrier as well. And now our eyes are set on the sun. Now, interesting things will happen with the sun. The uh, As we know that the uh, Aditya L1 mission will go about 15 lakh kilometers uh, towards the direction of the sun and maintain a, quite a heavy distance from the sun so that it doesn't feel the heat. But it will position itself in the L1 orbit and it will go around the sun 24-7 observing the sun for many interesting things. One of them would be in terms of the sun's solar flares. The solar flares are pretty, uh, uh, it's something of great concern for human civilization because uh, in 1859 when a solar flare hit the earth, uh, a geomagnetic storm emerged which uh, and it was 1859 so there was no electronics but even the telegraph wires caught fire and there was there was some loss now if we are living in a world which where we are governed by electronics like computers mobile phones airplanes everything is electronic so studying what the impact of solar flares would be on things like these because they are affected by magnetic storms as well would be essential we are also studying the chronosphere the corona the photosphere of the sun we will understand how it generates that fantastic life-giving heat, but also how 
the radiations which can be harmful for us, uh, how they are generated and what is what is the study around them. So we'll understand all that. Uh, do remember that we hardly understand anything as human civilization. We hardly understand anything about the sun. We barely know uh, our, you know, the, the parent of our solar system. So understanding the sun will also give us an understanding of other planets because everyone originated out of the sun and also the origination of the solar system, which happened 4.54 billion years ago. So very exciting mission. I think the global uh, scientific community has its eyes set on the Aditya L1. We're all praying for its success and also some um, uh, great, wonderful data which will create some brilliant research work, maybe some PhDs, uh, which will happen out of the data coming out of Aditya L1. Yeah. Now, we, we had an update uh, today as well, uh, uh, Srijan. And while you, we speak of Aditya L1, uh, you had a mission update of Chandrayaan-3 of, uh, you know, if you can pull out those pictures of uh, Pragyan, the rover, navigating the crater. Now, uh, tell us a little about, about the significance of that and, uh, and, and what the mission objectives will, will uh, include for Pragyan, the rover, and uh, your assessment of uh, the progress so far. Yes, so as I was telling you, you see, the, the biggest challenge was to actually land Vikram Lander, but the second biggest challenge was to ensure that the Pragyan rover does not lose its path. It does not topple over, it does not fall into a crater, nothing happens to it. Because do remember that a lot, bulk of the analysis which will happen from the lunar surface would have to be done by the Pragyan rover. So now, a few days ago, two days ago, we switched on all the, the two systems on Pragyan rover, both for the... Uh, for the ion analysis and for the laser analysis, uh, they worked. But now what we're seeing is that the Pragyan rover can is slowly moving away from the Vikram lander. Interesting thing happened, uh, you know, these are the unanticipated things which happen on the moon when you go to the southern pole. Uh, we saw how it encountered, uh, I think, almost a four meter diameter uh, crater. Uh, it also went through a hundred millimeter obstacle and it navigated its new path. Uh, so two things happen. One is that the AI on board Pragyan is working beautifully and also we are able to control it from our headquarters in Bangalore because uh, Pragyan is not 100% AI controlled. There is uh, an element of human control which can be done on it as well. So both the things are working, which means the communication is working very beautifully and also the AI system is also working optimally. Do understand that uh, when, a, when Pragyan rover encounters an, op uh, an obstacle, it takes 2.6 seconds, you know, 1.3 seconds to transmit that obstacle to Earth. And then whatever reaction happens, another 1.3 seconds for the uh, reaction to travel from Earth back to Pragyan, telling them what to do. So it's, it's a long path. So uh, the AI on board also has to work very well. Now, it'll be interesting, Pragyan is going to move farther and farther away from our Vikram lander. It will encounter uh, hotter days because you see the the sun uh, is rising uh, in the southern pole of the moon and it will rise for the next seven days uh, our seven days which means we are currently at about 9 30 a.m that's the kind of heat which is there on the lunar surface as the sun keeps rising uh, the heat will keep going up uh, and uh, our pragyan rover see one very interesting thing it has to do is that unlike vikram lander pragyan rover does not have solar panels on all sides so the pragyan rover has to adjust its orientation so that its solar panel is pointed towards the sun. That is also working because we've seen now it work for so many days. So we are able to do so many complex things. And I'm very excited that, yeah. you know, what the experiment results come in. That is what I'm looking forward to now. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a lot of excitement uh, around the Aditya L1 project and uh, the rapid strides that ISRO is taking the rapid strides of uh, the Indian space program. Here's what Nambi Narayan, former ISRO scientist, said while speaking about the Aditya L1 project. There is a study project. I think they are going to study at a distance of 15 lakh kilometers. It is going closer to sun. And they are trying to understand the core and it's a good project. See, in ISRO, we have no dearth of knowledge or intelligence or anything. That is a study project. I think they are going to study at a distance of 15 lakh kilometers. It is going closer to sun. And they are trying to understand the core. And 
it's a good project see in isro we have no dearth of knowledge or intelligence or anything and we have uh, some uh, breaking news coming in on the biggest story tonight more and more congratulatory messages coming in for the success of chandrayaan 3 moon mission uh, the russian president has dialed the prime minister he spoken to the prime minister a few minutes back we have a full detailed press release issued by the russian side russia detailing the telephone conversation between putin and uh, prime minister narendra modi saying that uh, Vladimir Putin once again warmly congratulated Narendra Modi on the successful landing of the Indian space station Chandrayaan-3 on the moon near its south pole. Readiness was reaffirmed to further develop bilateral cooperation in the space sector. The results of the BRICS summit in Johannesburg were also discussed. Significance of the agreements reached. First of all, the expansion of the BRICS which will undoubtedly contribute to the growth of the association's influence in international affairs was emphasized. and uh, speaks about uh, the close cooperation agreed in the context of Russia's BRICS chairmanship starting January 1st 2024 an exchange of views was also held in connection with the upcoming G20 summit in New Delhi uh, no word on whether he will be physically present though topical issues of Russian Indian uh, relations progressively developing in the spirit of uh, particularly privileged strategic partnership were considered and the positive dynamics of trade and economic cooperation were stated and a mutual disposition was expressed for the consistent implementation of large scale projects in the energy sector and work to expand international transport and logistics infrastructure that's a pull out that's a that's a read out rather from uh, the release from russia as uh, they detail that conversation between vladimir putin and the prime minister let me actually uh, go go back to shrijan if i can get no word shrijan uh, you know of course uh, russia has failed in its lunar mission i mean lunar 25 crash landed on the moon but they've been one of the only countries to successfully land on the moon as well uh, you know almost uh, 46 or uh, 5 decades ago uh, tells you about the rise the sudden rise sudden rapid rise of india's space program and how uh, many countries in fact you go through the entire series of reactions that came in from america uh, american leaders uh, everyone speaking about how they want to partner india more in the space sector yes and what it also shows that how difficult it is to land on the southern pole of moon vis-a-vis the equator so the landings which you are mentioning whether it's american or soviet uh, the earth while russia or any other country even china they never attempted to land on the southern pole which is the most interesting part of the moon because of what we are seeing you know the temperature variation the possibility of water the other minerals and so on but nobody was able to land there because of the craters and the the terrain features and the and the the extreme temperature you know when vikram was landing imagine if you saw that graph uh, you know at the surface or just above the surface it's about 60 70 degrees and then at surface it becomes 50 degrees and then uh, you know 8 bill- 8 uh, centimeters below it it's minus uh, 10 degrees so such a huge variation of 70 degrees happens it's a very complicated mission and that's why nobody was able to land there i mean in the russian sphere so that shows the prowess of india how far we have come i think the world was still ignoring you know in 2014 even when we did mangalyaan we saw that cartoon of new york times the world was still in a mode of you know let's ignore india india is still a small player it's a developing country it's not in the big league but i think with chandrayaan 3 landing on the southern pole after the chandrayaan 2's partial success it says a lot it has india has made a huge global footprint remember when prime minister started the brics uh, you know russia and china were probably ahead of us in the in the race or the accolades in space by the time brics ended we were probably surpassing both of them and i'm looking forward to the g20 now you know when what what great uh, admiration india will get from g20 and what what all we can do with all these countries in space industry remember space industry will be 600 billion dollar industry in the next 4 5 6 years and india can now our task should be very clear now we have to take a lion share out of this pie and we have to do this also on behalf of not just the developed countries but also become the global leader of the developing and the emerging economies and take them to space so i think that prime minister had said it even the brics mission uh, i think that will be the new flavor and that's what you're mentioning that everybody wants to work with us and uh, i i'm going to see india just like we did with the vaccines we became yeah. the saviors and took the vaccine to all the countries which could not make it the same thing we will do in the space industry
Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us, Trijan. Uh, going from strength to strength, fantastic. Let's uh, all uh, uh, tell our viewers that we're looking forward to the 2nd of September. That's the liftoff of the Aditya L1 from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota. Thank you, Sri.